Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, coming to you from Simi Valley, California, the first time I have ever been to the Ronald Reagan Presidential Museum and Library. At the top of this peak, not only sits Air Force One inside its doors, but also a temporary exhibit, soon to be ending, of some of the artifacts from Titanic and some of the screen-used items from the James Cameron feature film on the subject. This should be fun. This is the very Bible that at his inauguration he placed his left hand on and swore to uphold the Constitution behind this glass case. It's that very Bible. It belonged to his mother. A while back I visited his childhood home in Dixon, Illinois and I stood at that fireplace that he used to hide coins under that piece of wood. It's interesting to be in California and see the piece of wood from a place all the way over in Illinois. Getting his start in radio, he eventually transitioned to Hollywood, star of the silver screen. But if you ever wonder what you would have gotten if you were on his Christmas list, he would have sent you a pack of smokes. Three, two, one. Nobody got close to today, George. You, George, you and I ought to talk about you, the life of our two boys to grow up and be just like you someday. You mean to play football? No, not just that, to have you pose and fall from the same theory. Mom, say that? My mom is yes. recreating a scene, he said your a Hollywood are rare and scene. Your age. There you are. Yes. <laughs> he said your qualities are rare and for your age. No, Brock's a rare one, not me. Nailed it. This podium shows how a teleprompter works. The letters of the speech roll on the television set at the bottom. And almost like a mirror on the opposite side is where you do the reading. So you should be able to see. Oh yeah, right there. In this photo of Nancy at the inauguration, the outfit she's wearing is also located here. There's the cap and her dress. At his uh, attempted assassination in, in 1981 in DC, this is the jacket he was wearing. And you can see where the bullet holes were. They have them marked 1B, 1C. They have this on display here as well. Even though nearly everything in this Oval Office is a recreation, there are a few things that are authentic to the era. All the items on the desk he used. The First Lady was a big advocate of not doing drugs and she took her campaign all across the U.S. and the world. Check this out. A board game. A just say no board game and baseball bat. And just over this railing is Air Force One in all its glory. Look at this thing. An entire airplane inside the museum hangar. And if that's not impressive enough, it's got a pretty good view. You'll notice the number on the tail wing is 27,000. That is the specific number for the Boeing 707. This was used by U.S. Presidents Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, H.W. Bush, Clinton, and W. Bush. It's almost as if it's ready to take off through that window and blast over the mountains. It also states very specifically, no photography allowed inside the plane. But they do take a professional photo that they sell you on the front steps. Can we take pictures? You can take pictures, just no flash. Oh, no flash, okay. Are they letting me? get some video as long as I don't use flash. <laughs> it's not every day you get to see the cockpit of Air Force One. That is super cool. Wow. There he is right there. This was stateroom one. That's where he would have sat. Nice relaxing couch and a map of the world. Back there, that's probably the restroom. This little area was where Nancy used as her office 
you can see her little jacket there and a photo of her against the window. That's Gorbachev sitting on the couch. Except I don't think that photo was taken inside the plane itself. It wasn't in this room. But there's a lot of different areas that were used through here. And that fruit over there, that's, that's not real. That's plastic fruit. This area was reserved for the Secret Service. Looks like there's about 10 seats total. And up here, there's some of them conversing with the president. This is just a bigger galley. The president would also carry with him chocolate cakes. He believed in personal diplomacy. He believed that he could get things done on a face-to-face -face basis, and many traveled a lot. Originally on the pamphlet, it said no recording, but inside, the, the worker said that I could. What'd you think about the, the plane? I loved it. It was pretty neat. Yep. What'd you think of that cake? You think that cake is uh, edible? No, I don't think so. It's probably fake. He said that Reagan would not fly between Christmas and New Year's, but if they did have to fly other times of the year, he would do research on some of the faculty, and if it was their birthday, he would feed them cake. Not probably not from his spoon to theirs, but you know. He was a family man. Yeah, exactly. He he, he loved thought about people. The line to get in has grown considerably. Got to wait a while if you want to walk through there. Quite a while. In 1984, when this Cadillac limousine was built, it was state of the art at the time and it was first used to take him home to Dixon, Illinois, a homecoming of sorts. The motorcade has been recreated somewhat, starting with the police vehicles, the limo in the middle, and another vehicle in the back. By today's standards, that would be considered very minuscule when it comes to protecting the President of the United States. It's much more elaborate and in-depth today than it was back then. Directly underneath the plane and the line to get in is a pub bearing his name. And if you want to wet your whistle, why not try a linenade? Look at that. That's, that's kind of clever. There he is enjoying a pint in Ireland where they transported this wooden bar from. And he would often joke some of the other presidents, like John F. Kennedy got an airport, Lyndon Johnson got a space center, but he, he got himself a pub. At first glance, you would assume this is a painting, but in reality, it's made out of 10,000 jelly beans. It's pretty artistic. Inside this room is a recreation of the Berlin Wall equipped with some escape tunnels that the children are darting in and out of. Look up top, quite a bit of barbed wire in this guard tower. You have to wonder what some of the words that were spoken at those private meetings with Gorbachev. And yes, they have even recreated the birthmark on Gorbachev's head. I feel at home on the range. I'm riding a horse. No, really, I'm on, on the saddle of a horse, even though it's, it's a fake horse, but it's a nonetheless. This scale model of the whole complex parked over here, walked in the front entrance there, through the courtyard past that fountain and into here and meandering our way around. Here's the hangar where the plane is and Marine One and off to the right there would be the mountain range. You can just see the vastness and magnitude of this place. This American flag was draped on his casket during his funeral, and the bugle was the same one used to play taps. The riding boots were placed on a horse over the saddle backwards as it made its way during the funeral procession. Very somber artifacts here. Now making our way into the National Treasure gallery for the Titanic exhibit. Now the James Cameron film was not the only movie to depict the tragedy. In fact, this dress was worn by Debbie Reynolds in the movie The Unsinkable Molly Brown. This shows what the debris field was like. Thousands of items from the ship were cast along the ocean floor. 
plates, chairs, even a child's doll head was found. They've done a very good job recreating what the sea would be like. The light effects shimmering down. And I don't think these are actual pieces from the Titanic. Just recreations, but nonetheless, pretty incredible looking. There it is, at least a scale model version. This wooden replica was made in 1970. The submergible that you see along the deck there, they nicknamed it Alvin. But look at all the buildup, the ocean buildup all along the sides of the ship. The titanium pressure sphere from inside Alvin is down here. And the top part, as you see in this photo, that's right here. The top of the submergible. An even larger model replica. Pretty incredible. This full-size prop was seen in the control room, which I remember from later in the movie when the captain who was going down with the ship, the water rushed in those front windows. But they also had smaller versions so they could film them on a much smaller scale. And by blowing up the screen, it would make it look very realistic. You would never know the difference between a full-size ship and a miniature. Look at the size of that chair. It's tiny. Sending out an SOS signal on the telegraph. This is way before text messaging and phone calls. You had to send out a call for distress by typing on that little contraption there. Some signage screen used, as well as the violin, artwork, and handcuffs that Rose used this axe to break Leonardo DiCaprio free. It was a close call. She only had that one last swing, but she pulled it off. They moved the set here. It might look familiar to you. This is the area where Jack drew Rose wearing the necklace, wearing the heart of the ocean, right over there. Kathy Bates wore these shoes and dress playing the role of the unsinkable Molly Brown. I'm just noticing above the people's heads that are watching a short video clip are these guys on the lookout tower with the bell. Be careful of icebergs, fellas. I heard they're out there and a lot of them getting away from the movie props now and into the real relics. This is a piece of one of the original life vests right there as well as this deck chair. There are only seven of these left in existence thrown off the side of the ship into the water in hopes of using them later as a flotation device. Wallace Hartley was the music and band leader on board and this sheet music as well as the music pouch was found strapped to his side. Once news of the wreck got out there were a lot of organizations taking donations for the family members of those that were lost. This is one of the banners used by one of those companies. The bracket on the left and the wooden pieces are from the Grand Staircase. Pretty incredible. Wow. Now I must confess, I had no idea till now that him and the First Lady were buried here on property. Learn something new every day. President Reagan and Nancy laid to rest on the museum ground. That's gonna do it for today. I ended up buying an annual pass, not only to this location, but to a dozen other presidential museums slash libraries across the country. Especially considering as much as I travel and a lot of the special events that the locations have any of these states and cities I can gain access to, so that will come in handy in the future. I do a wide variety of content on the platform of YouTube. Two channels, this one, but I also have a main channel, YouTube slash Adam the Woo, where you can find more ambitious, arduous tasks that 
take a while to produce, film, edit, travel. I will save all those for that channel. This channel, which used to be an everyday vlog for over five years, I'm not doing daily anymore, but I have decided to start throwing content back up on this particular channel. And if you enjoy that, please subscribe, not only to this one, but the other one. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Just push the thumbs up icon, and that will let me know if you appreciate what I am doing. See you in the next video. Vlog over.